Hello, this is Jane Miller of the Miller Institute. I want to welcome you to our personal and professional development series of webinars. Today I want to talk to you about thinking into results. Can you imagine that results just take a different way of thinking? It's true. You know, many of us and our companies in this weakened and crazy economy, we're fighting the same battles with some barely surviving. Our resources are spread too thin, sales are slumping, and employees, they're not motivated. They fear the, fear the loss of their jobs. I have a process that provides specific tools and step-by-step -step strategies that replace the fear of the unknown with a success mindset and specific action steps for finding opportunities in this, again, changing economy within your organizations. Thinking into results is a combination of 12 logical, practical, I'll call them modules or principles that they ensure a thriving, success-driven culture, whether it's in your company, your organization, or personally, that translates into an exceptional return on investment. Now, I believe everyone has the power to change and become more productive and creative at work and at home. We just need to learn how to apply the power of our minds. Our mind is a beautiful piece of energy and we don't use it correctly. So combining the power of our mind and our own unique gifts will fully maximize the potential that's within every one, one of us. Boy, what a gift to give. I want to talk about the different modules and principles that thinking into results brings. And I promise you, this process will unleash the, the potential of our most important asset, that of our people. So let's begin. Principle number one. We talk in principle number one about a worthy ideal. And really the business principle translates into goal setting and achieving. Well, the advantages of of this is it's important to having have growth goals that inspire people. A lot of programs teach goal settings and I always had a goal setting program that explain how to make goals that promote quantum leaps. Now most of us choose goals that we think we can do which really only means you go sideways. Goals like that don't inspire people and then employees won't buy into the goals but the process of setting and achieving team goals, as taught in this principle, will allow everyone to align more easily with the company goals. So we encourage the people to think big and set both personal and professional goals so that they are more able to set big team goals. And the benefit is when employees have big goals that inspire them, it helps move the business forward, upward, not sideways. Because if the business is more successful, the effect flows down. Salespeople sell more. Employees feel more secure because they're working in companies that are growing and motivation soars. There's less turnover. And employees now see themselves as part of something bigger. You know, and personally, a worthy ideal, do you really want what you say you want? And do you really believe you're going to get it? As people study this module or this lesson, they begin to develop an awareness that deciding what you want and getting what you want are two completely different subjects. So here we'll begin to understand what a goal really is and what your belief system is around the goal. Then we build the right kind of goal and go get it. Principle two, the knowing and doing gap. Really, this business principle is about return on investment, but let me flip to personal. So, if people know what to do, why aren't they doing what they know how to do? Why do we continually do things that produce results we don't want? Well, really, the cause of the problem lies in our paradigms or our habits, our ways of thinking. Those paradigms keep us running at 40 miles an hour when we could actually run at Mach 10. This module focuses on why we already know what to do 
to obtain greater results, but seldom actually do it. But once you understand how your paradigms function, you can start taking control of your thinking and the results that you'll obtain. Now, most training programs give information to people about how to do their job, but this process helps people implement what you already know, but we change the behavior to close the gap. Close the gap between what employees know and what they actually do. The benefits are from past, present, and future trainings. That systems, project management, Excel, timed, all those things. Once you understand your paradigms, all those trainings will be better useful. And when people understand the root cause of their non-productive behaviors and how to change them, they become more productive. The company becomes more productive. The department profits increase. And as a result, you won't have to spend as much time training because employees already know what to do. Because they're more productive, they're happier. There's a measurable reduction in turnover and less friction between people. <laughs> Doesn't that sound great? Let's move to the third principle, the power of the mind. The business principle surrounding this is about productivity and efficiency. You know, many programs or trainings might cause a temporary improvement in behavior. How often have we sent someone or gone ourselves to a training program of the day and it lasts the next day we're all hepped up and motivated and it fades after time. That's because the training programs don't change the root cause of behavior, which again are those paradigms, those beliefs, the multitude of habits and patterns that are really driven by our subconscious conditioning. In thinking into results, we really teach how to change our habits and, and to get teams of people to work together to replace negative habits with positive ones. This is how a company culture of productivity is developed. You know, the benefits are, are many. Employees turn their non-productive habits into productive habits. They'll be more efficient and productive in their job. And again, this leads to an increased bottom line for the company, and so on. The idea of subconscious culture and subconscious conditioning is something we delve into really well in thinking into results. Let's talk about principle number four, our secret genie. <laughs> so what are you thinking right now? You know, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, we become what we think about all day long. While you may never have recognized it before, you can see this fact ring true in the lives of people all around you. It rings true for, for you and me, too. Our thoughts come at us rapidly. And many times, many cases, we don't even really hear them anymore. But our inner mind hears them loud and clear. Case in point, when you stop to think about what you're thinking as you, you looked at this and, and read this screen, what is it that you thought? In this module, we talk about the secret to understanding exactly how your mind works so that you can unlock the life you deserve and the company results you want. And that's why we call it the secret genie. It's really about peak performance of our employees and a return on, not investment, but a return on the individuals that you employ or that you have in your lives. And again, other programs don't teach the root cause of success. So really, without the knowledge of how the mind works, behavioral change is it, it's temporary at best. You know, the benefits are really the team performance is improved as well as the individuals. You know, teams and, and the individuals can break free from the past and, and habits and work better together. This idea of secret genie and your thought process is phenomenal. Principle five. The principle is itself thinking into results, and it's really about innovative and proactive thinking. You know, another way we could look at it is, let's stop the outside noise 
Now, most people have been programmed to just allow the outside world to control the way they think and act. They see certain situations and they just react to them through habitual patterns. But what we're teaching in this module is that we're going to learn to stay in charge of our internal world no matter what. No matter what people around us are saying or doing, um, the TV says, the news anchors, no matter what they say, no matter what the external factors are, we're going to teach you a method of how to sort and accept only what is going to be good for you and your company. So really, this concept teaches people how to think and to analyze their thinking. Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> You know, we a lot of us went through high school and most of us through college and on and on and I don't remember a class on thinking. This process teaches folks how to think. It helps them realize their past results are a reflection of their past thinking. And to change what they're getting, they have to change their thinking. Take responsibility for their behavior and their results. If, if that's the only, just the one thing you'd get out of the whole program, not only for yourself, but your, your people taking responsibility for their own behavior and the results, can you imagine the success? Can you imagine the growth? And when you talk about teams, thinking helps teams come up with creative and innovative solutions to problems. And the employees, you know, they see problems as opportunities to strengthen the company, not as problems. We can use this to help move negative situations that have people stuck and maybe they persisted for a long while. Thinking into results takes these negative situations and moves them into desired results. Number six, environment is but our looking glass and really the business principle is that we are creating powerful teams. You know, deep in the recesses of our minds, we have an opinion of ourselves. You, you have an opinion of you. This is referred to as your self-image. And it's really a control mechanism that, that determines what comes into your life, whether it's great, good, or bad. It determines how well we do in our life and how, how we can relate to work and relationships and earning money and even our weight and our health. So this module focuses on how self-image determines how the rest of the world sees you and interacts with you. And it walks you through some powerful action steps to strengthen those aspects that you might feel lacking. On the company end and in organizations, when employees look at this image, it'll help them to understand that to be more productive, you have to change the image of, them, uh, of themselves. You see yourself being more productive. Now that sounds pretty simple, but teams are strengthened <clears throat> because now we're cooperating with each other rather than competing. Because each individual's image uses, the, again, those unique talents that we're all here with. You know, teams underlying have competition. So a benefit of looking at that self-image is the competition within the team is transformed to cooperation and working in harmony. Finally, finally using everyone's strengths. Principle seven is one of my favorite, trample the terror barrier. And yes, it does have to do with our fears. You know, what do you do when the walls show up? What do you do when that barrier comes? You know. Any time that we make changes in our lives, normally we'll find that we make some progress, we're going along and we're excited and we're happy about our progress, and then bam! <laughs> you hit a wall that stops you in your tracks, maybe even knocks you off your feet. The tear your barrier concept teaches us why this happens, why you can expect it to happen, and exactly what to do about it. So so that you're vanquishing those trolls at the bridge and, and just moving on forward to your goals. You know, employees and teams usually don't voice their fears and doubts, so these issues don't get addressed. Addressing the terrier barrier, 
creates an open environment for, for people to talk about their fears so they can replace them with the positive thoughts they need and to get support from their team members. And teams explore their collective thinking so they can help others through the terror barrier while at the same time understanding how their source of fear may be limiting them. You know, and as our folks overcome personal fears, the teams get much better. As they become, overcome personal fears, they can help the other team members overcome their fears so that we're all more forward thinking and productive, more able to think of creative solutions. This way, teams move together. They move forward together into bigger actions than the individual could do by themselves. The power of praxis is our principle number eight. And what is praxis? Well, when I think about it, I think about getting everything to move in sync with each other. And, you know, you can take action, but if you don't really believe in the result that you'll get from the action, you're not going to get very far. And further, you can believe all you want and even wish on a falling star, but if you don't take action, you're going to be wishing on a lot of stars over the course of your lifetime. You'll learn to integrate this idea, this praxis, which actually is integration of belief with behavior. So we gain really quick ground in business, in our goals, in our income, personal, and so on. You know, the business principle around this is aligning actions and results with company vision. And I've done a lot of work with you all on strategic planning and visioning and aligning um, your employees' strengths with the company vision. And this is, is such an important module because employees finally see the connection between their beliefs and behaviors, okay? So again, we need to do both. Both, we need to believe it and we need to act. But when folks change from being non-productive and putting into place productive actions, the results match the company's mission and goals. Other pro programs and you know training may not give this chance for personal growth because you know we, we sometimes focus on teaching different behavior. But if the employees are not aware of the congruency of both their beliefs and their behaviors, they might not be able to practice the new behavior. And don't get too scared on this. We, we help people see the connection between their beliefs and behavior and the results. You know, if employees are responsible for helping to create the vision, they'll reach its potential. When you create cross-functional teams and teams, you know, drawing people from every department, make sure that together they have the vision so that they can reach their potential and the results. That way they'll feel ownership for the team and they'll move them ahead. They'll create the results that they're capable of creating. And boy, we can sure create a lot. There's a magic word. It's really the magic of attitude because attitude and mindset produce high producing teams. Now, I'm not going to give it this one three syllable word away, although I just did. <laughs> it's probably one of the most powerful words in, in the world of languages. And yes, just about every language has it. Without putting this word, this attitude into action in your life, you might make little incremental squeaks forward and go a little ahead, but you, the movements are not going to be responsible for you reaching your business and personal goals without this all-important attitude. We'll show you how to implement it in your life. You know, many times with, with other training programs, we don't really know what attitude is. Perhaps we've, we know it's, there's a good attitude and a bad attitude, but what is it really? You know, thinking into results this process gives us a very complete definition of attitude. Some may talk about the importance of having a good attitude, but we really explained what it is and how to change it. And this helps employees, of course, be more productive as they change the image of themselves and begin to cooperate more and more. How often have you said, 
if only the people or only this person could fix their attitude. Well, once we understand what it is, it can easily be changed. And then the folks that are on teams become more productive because the team image changes. You know, the other thing in this day and age is being effective and efficient, but getting lots done in the same amount of time or even less time. And, you know, to learn the importance of the way we create that positive attitude, no matter the situation, will help us to accomplish more in a shorter period of time. It, you know, it makes us more efficient. What's really great is when people learn to change their attitude, and they really want to they will be in control over any situation. The most valuable person. This module and business principle has to do with the effective leadership. And it's not just for the bosses and the, the top dogs and the managers in the company. Every person should have this level of leadership in their lives. You know, thinking into rich, it, it helps employees develop qualities of leadership and also to be a good follower, follower when we need to do that. This process emphasizes the creation of a positive environment where employees are appreciated for the work they do. It gives folks opportunities to share what they need from each other in order to move toward the goal. You know, when we talk about principle 10 and the most valuable person, there's many, many leaders in the world. And what really is it? You know, you probably deal with a good share of leaders in your daily life, your business life. And of course, you're a leader yourself. But just because someone is given leadership um, a position or responsibilities, it doesn't necessarily mean that he or she is an effective leader. So we're going to talk about the truth to real leadership, <clears throat> what are the key ingredients to effective leadership, and how to build these same things into your own persona. It doesn't matter where we are on the totem pole or where you fall in the pecking order. We're all leaders. And this module will help us to become more so. You know, leaders guide others to results consistently. And that's what we're out to do. Lesson 11, leaving everyone with the impression of increase. Hmm. We might think of this as profit through service. You know, there's a fundamental basic universal law that has the honor of running everything on the planet. It's the law of cause and effect. Most people understand this law when they see gravity in action. So if you step off of a ladder or a 30-story building, the effect, unquestionably, is the same. But, you know, most people don't understand the significance of the law in our everyday actions and interactions. In this module, we're going to teach this number, number one, I'm going to call it law of success, as, as it relates to identifying and acting upon the higher side of everyone's personality. Now, while it seems like a fun and a perfectly happy thing to do, the ramifications stretch much farther and deeper than most can imagine. You know, Profit Through Service emphasizes that we give with no expectation of return our services to others. We promote a high standard of performance for all levels in the company. Leaders and employees, we're all encouraged to do more and give more than you're paid for. How often have we heard folks say, you don't pay me enough to do that, or I'm not paid to do that. This law, with leaving everyone with the impression of increase, is about creating a culture of giving more than is expected. It's kind of an old school rule, isn't it? You know, thinking into results, this, this idea promotes positive relations within teams and between teams because members start looking for what others do well and then they bring it to their attention. 
and remind them, hey, thank you for giving more than expected. You know, your clients will do the same if you give more than is expected. Because if you give your services out, they will have the impression of increase. So we're going to look for ways to make, you know, and, and help our team and our customers feel valued and appreciated so that we keep our employees, we keep our customers, we keep business with the company mo mo really running smoothly, and it really creates great company morale. So more on this later, and you'll be intrigued on how we do this with just the idea of thinking into results and how our worlds expand through service. Finally, principle number 12, magnifying the mind and problem solving. So this business principle is really about problem solving and team problem solving. But here, it's really about the key to stunning achievement, not standard achievement, but in this final module, I introduced the concept of actually creating stunning achievement, a quantum leap that absolutely catapults your biggest goals. And so since we went through all those 11 fundamentals that so few people even know what they are, this one will be an extraordinary, extraordinary lesson. You know, many programs teach us how to make incremental changes. But with thinking into results, we're going to lay out the steps for quantum leap. It, the results will be dramatic. We'll introduce guidelines to creating teams of people who work in harmony. And this may even be just you and another partner. It may be you and <laughs> your self-image. But again, the process itself helps us to create results in a magnified way. No struggling, no confusion. And we'll show you how to sustain that success so you keep getting better and better and better at what you're doing. Magnifying the mind creates focus. And the focus empowers increases in performance that we can actually measure. And we'll get into a lot of this in the modules. But again, magnifying the mind is going to result in the focus we need. Because you know, if you believe you can do it, you can. Now, through my facilitation, a lot of you are already familiar with it. I like to bring a lot of energy. I like to bring stories and fun, but also keeping a mind to the bottom line. What is it you want? You know, if you can tell me what you want, I can show you how to get it. What's the method? And look here over on the right, or the left hand side here. Quite quickly, some of the things we use are repetition, personal study, group facilitation, masterminding, personal coaching, and then an annual follow along. So. I've written here that thinking into results, it's not just something you skim over. I facilitated this in you know as few as 12 weeks or as long as 24 weeks with follow along. I meet with people either every week or every other week. And in between, it requires that people take the personal study. They'll be watching DVDs and doing some reading and doing things in a workbook. So it requires a commitment from you. If you're doing this program on your own, I'll act as your coach, your accountability coach, to follow along with you as well. You know, these lessons have had the potential to create exponential change in your life. And, but it does ask that you devote time each day or each week to focus. Again, focus on what the program delivers. Here's a little bit about me, Jane Miller, and my Miller Institute. You know, I've been doing this for a number of years now, and no matter my path in life, I have always helped folks. I have always held the light down the path, and maybe using a big stick, <laughs> or maybe using a big carrot. 
It is my lifelong goal to continue to serve as I shine light for others. So I'd like to talk to you more about how thinking into results can really make a difference in your life, in your business, in your company, in your personal life, in your organizations. So what we'll do next is have you give me a call at 1-800-540-2610, send me an email, jane at millerinstitute.com, or really run into me on the street if you're in my town, and let's talk a little bit more about these 12 principles and really try to figure out what is it that you want for you, your company, your personal life. Because if you can tell me what you want, I can show you how to get it. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today.